sign with this, this very kind of beautiful and clumsy cursive. Mm -hmm. It was like partly three dimensional. And every day I would come down and take a different, I'd take a picture of it, I'd like 5,000 pictures of Cortellian carpets. <laughs> And that's just the one, that's just one sign, like, like Flatbush is amazing. And then I think like Dunkin' Donuts, I think Dunkin' Donuts bought it and they, instead of taking down the Cortelli or something, instead of taking down Cortelli carpets, they just put their Dunkin' Donuts right over it. So you can see half Cortelli carpets and half Dunkin' Donuts. I think they still sell carpets and donuts, so. But yeah, I've been meditating a lot on death and thinking about um, a short period of my parents' life when they were into Edgar Cayce, who was an American mystic, and uh, he was called the sleep, sleeping prophet, and because uh, he would go into these trances, doze off, and then people would come to him uh, to have hypnotic readings, because he would, he would have a, a visions, psychic visions while he was sleeping. And he was the one who kind of popularized uh, past lives and reincarnation in a um, sort of popular American psyche. You know, and he had a couple books and a big following. My parents were kind of into him for a while, and they would go to psychics to get their own past lives read. And they would come back all excited because they'd find out that they were like the Queen of Persia, <laughs> Queen of England, that they had, you know, drowned in the Titanic. And, they had invented the printing press. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, multiple lives, all of them historic and beautiful and famous. <laughs> Somehow leading up to this miserable life. <laughs> Beat down, working class parents, seven kids, can hardly put food on the table. It's karma for you. But is their fault because they actually were animal enthusiasts, so obsessed with these pets, and they had thousands of pets, more pets than you could count. And they spent more money on health insurance and food for the animals than they did on us. <laughs> I mean, they had like stored away money for tuition for pet schools, <laughs> Ivy League training classes for German Shepherds and Louviers and. They were um, real pet lovers and they would gather anything that they could find that was injured or hurt. They would go to the Humane Society and take in and adopt um, the three-legged dog and the, the agoraphobic California king snake, <laughs> the blind cat, and you know, the goat with one horn. It wasn't in the center like a unicorn, but off to the side. <laughs> This is when we moved out of Detroit to live in the country, and they created sort of like all these sort of gated little villages of the animal kingdom. It was like Dr. Doolittle. And you know, we were the typical kind of white trash northern Michigan family with the little plot of land and the trailer and the, uh, the Chevy Nova up on cinder blocks and the whatever, the, the snowmobiles. And, but then there was this other thing behind, behind the house, which was like an animal kingdom. <laughs> Ducks and geese and rats and dogs and cats and lovebirds. So beautiful. Um, and my parents believed that all of these animals also had past lives, and so they would take them all to the psychic. <laughs> and, you know, they would take the, um, the little poodle that was all cut up like a lollipop juniper, take it to the psychic, and they would get the readings on the dog, find out what he was, and then they would name the dog based on that. So we had a poodle named Mark Twain, <laughs> and Pomeranian, a little Pomeranian, those little fuzzy things, named Queen Victoria. <laughs> so, and of course, these animals were all kind of sickly and disabled, and eventually they would die. It was terrible. And, and all I wanted was like the most elaborate expansive pet cemetery that was like really exciting to me. 
I was so excited when these animals would die. I would get to bury them, <laughs> and make these crosses, and dig these big trenches, get out my candles, and do my liturgical songs. <laughs> no, my, my parents were such hippies. They were like, no way. We are going to give each of these a, um, a sky burial, where you just lay it out and give it to nature. So you watch your pet poodle, Mark Twain, get devoured by the crows. <laughs> they also had a big funeral pyre, where we just, sometimes there were so many animals, you just pile them up and burn them. <laughs> So the whole neighborhood just smelled of death, animal death, <laughs> dog food and animal death. We stayed alone. 